Rights of Banning for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to bump into here in Manchester on Friday after the Boxer weigh in. Renowned trainer from the UK, trainer of former world champions, Mr. Dave Cole. Dave, how are we doing? I'm very good, very good. It's been a good atmosphere. DJ banging some tunes out, packed out weigh in room, and um, got some great characters for tomorrow night. Looking forward to it. Hey, Dave, just obviously, as always, let's get some of your opinions on other topics going on at the moment on, in the boxing world. Um, let's start off with Eddie Hearn, DAZN, Sky Sports, Adam Smith, etc. Everyone thought when Eddie made that move to DAZN that we might see the demise of, of Sky Sports, but it looks like Sky Sports have, I say, we're not going to go away. They've just signed Ben Whitaker. I think that's now five Olympians. Uh, I believe a lot of the Olympians also spoke to Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn has gone on record to say that Sky are paying them crazy amounts of money, but do Sky have to do that? to bring in talent, to, to showcase that, listen, we're not going to go away. We're going to carry on continuing growing the sport of boxing. Well, I think, so when Eddie, Eddie left Sky, it was always a case of what is Sky going to do next? Now, if Sky look at it and think, boxing, are we that bothered about boxing? Mm, not so much. Then Sky go away. So we need, because we, we're on the outside, we don't know what Sky are thinking. But Sky, obviously, see, you know, boxing, apart from football, boxing gets talked about a hell of a lot. Now it's very, very mainstream. And, and listen, the partnership of Sky and Matru did fantastic for boxing over the last 10, 12 years, whatever long it's going to be. It's gone to another level. You look at your Wembleys and things like that. You look at the packed out arenas, O2 uh, arenas at the end. You know, it's, it's grown as a sport where people are now non-boxing people and his uncles are stopping on street or, or whatever and, and talk to you about boxing so that partnership was fantastic you know in the in the decades before and that was that was frank warren and uh, frank warren and sky sky and sky that's that's quite a big denominator now sky obviously eddie's moved on sky have decided no we want to stay in boxing it's been a big part of our, our you know our company for the last 30 years or whatever long that they've been around why are we going to walk away from it so you're starting from scratch. It's like, it's like man, you. You're gonna have to if you're gonna get in rid of a lot of other players. You got to bring in a whole new bunch of players too. They've got to invest. Sky have, have looked around and they're okay. We've got nobody because Eddie Eddie's took everybody to the zone. Obviously, if they're they're match from fighters, then they're gonna go to the zone. But then that's left Sky with with nothing. Boxers come along. Yes, you've got your tournament series. But they now have to start from scratch and build a, build a squad, build a bunch of fighters that they believe can entertain and also then develop into being champions, not just world champions, Europeans, British, and so on. It's going to take time, but it's going to take money. You've got to go out there and, and, and at the end of the day, whereas Eddie's got a stack stable and he's, he's got you know, fighters all over the world, he may want that fighter that much, he may need that fighter that much, Sky have got no fighters, so they need a fighter so much more. So they're willing to bid more, they're willing to pay more. So if it comes to that case, then of course they're going to do it because they need those fighters. You know, uh, Sky is a platform where, though, for those fighters, if a deal's a deal's a deal, if it's there on the table, it depends what you're looking at. If you're looking for quick money, or you're looking, what are you looking for? What do you want in your career? You know, at the moment, right now, you can't you can't fault Sky as a platform. It's the best platform out there, and fighters want a box on a, on a big platform and so Sky are building a, a good a good team and, and you know it's, it's, just, it's been a good start what, what is it a year now you know so it's been a good start that they've, that they've made and it's only going to develop and develop but that's like DAZN DAZN starting off maybe they were struggling to attract a couple of fighters out, outside of you know the ones that are already signed to match room but then as you see the fights that they're putting together as you see the content they're putting together then more and more fighters went across and more and more fighters were getting signed and because it's a, there's a body of work the, the problem that Ben's had and, and Box has had is that because it's unknown yes Sky is a platform you know but from a fighter's point of view and sometimes from a manager's point of view you think well I need to see how this how this works out because it's like I don't know him as a promoter I don't know how he's going to do I don't know how it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to evolve so there's a bit of hesitancy. Eh? So now they've had a few sh shows, cracking atmospheres, good fights, good nights, and now you're probably seeing that fighters thinking, well, hang on a minute, it is a good option. So there we go. Give a great example about Manchester United there. But it's true. If if, if you're gonna strip something, and, and if something does get stripped, then there's a there's a there's a, there's a process of rebuilding, you know, and. 
because because I'm wounded at the moment with what's going on with football. That's the sort of thing that I look at with with, with Sky. It's like it was stripped of the stars, stripped of the big names and 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 the stable. Um, so it's a case of rebuilding, and you can't you know you can't just rebuild with the foundation. You have to have a few star quality personalities a few fighters where you've got big big expectations for uh, and I know I've got massive ex- expectations for people like Ben Whitaker, Lauren Price um, Karis um, you know, I'm sure I've missed a couple others they've, they've, they've signed quite a few um, but then they've also got a steady basis of fighters as well that have been signing you know, a little bit quieter but it's good solid fighters that are going to be involved in good fights like I said, you can't sign everybody and there's enough platforms where fighters have got the choice you got Wasserman Wasserman have got a show tonight a cracking show tonight you know return of Josh Kelly that's what we want to see we want to see these names coming back and, and it's on terrestrial TV you know so the Sowlands and, and Wasserman having, having um, Channel 5 that's massive for boxing it's massive I'm, I'm a boxing fan and as a fan I don't get this where fans are fans of promoters or hatred towards promoters and if they're putting if they're putting a show on with quality fighters good fighters good prospects whatever support the fighters who gives a fuck who promoters right as long as the promoters paying the fighters putting them on there keeping them active building their careers up that's what the promoter needs to do and if you're a fan of their shows great but ultimately don't want I, I see people that that want fighters to lose because of the promoter they've got that promoter is probably doing a great job for that fighter and that fighter's life is excelling because of their talent and their work don't get me wrong but because of the opportunity that the promoter has given them as well whether it's Frank whether it's Eddie whether it's Ben or Wasserman it doesn't matter it, support the fighters don't get too involved in the promoter when the promoter is doing a shit job tell them he's doing a shit job when the promoter's doing a great job don't be afraid to tell him he's doing a great job you know because everybody's in it trying to do the best for their business a boxer's business is himself a promoter's business is his company his promotional company and a tv network's business is their tv network and and they will always do what's best for them and that's why sometimes you'll see boxers leave one promoter to go with another because it's they feel it's the best for their business so you can't really slag them off for that if they feel that that's that's what they need to do you can't really slag them off for that but then it's the same thing with eddie thought that the zone was a better move for him um, and probably for his top end fighters with, with, with the money from the zone being able to make the huge fights because he has a bigger budget so he took that gamble and he went away from sky he thought that was better for him Sky thought, rather than packing up, we'll get, we'll give his contract to Ben and to Top Rank, and we'll go bigger and we'll do what we want to do. So it, it, everyone's out for the, you know for themselves, really. I just want to get your thoughts uh, on a tweet. I'm going to read the tweet. I just want to get your thoughts on it. Just in case you needed to know what I look like, Jake Paul, this is me. The other is how your coach got to know me. Creed was pretty Ricky Conlon. What this is, Tony Bellew. Do not wake the fucking animal up. That's been dead for years. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> it took a big bite of that apple, didn't it? <laughs> um, Bellew's Bellew. He'll, he'll, he'll comment on certain things and other things will just poke him in the right way where he'll just say, hello, lad. That's what he'll say. Um, but, um, One more dance? <laughs> No, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. Listen, he's in good shape. He's in good shape. But that's for his health and his, as a man, he's in good shape and, and fair play. And his Hollywood life. And his, <laughs> and his Hollywood life. Yeah, that as well. But um, no, I don't, I don't think so. And listen, Jake Paul, I get it. I get it. He's got millions of followers. He's massively famous. He earns loads of money. Whatever he turned his mind to, he would make money from. If he decided to be a snooker player, everybody watch him doing snooker whatever he wants to do it just so happens that he's chose to box and so for him what he's doing he's doing a great job I would like to see him fight some real fighters before he starts talking about beating Canelo and beating this man and that man it's not actual boxers I mean not UFC fighters and stuff like that fight some boxers and build build his career up like like these guys are you can't you can't knock him just because he's already rich and got loads of followers you can't knock him for coming into this sport because it's the same as anybody else 
but it's just, some of the stuff that it says is just like shut up man but I, I enjoyed him, the, the stuff it was doing with the promotion side of things I think he's doing a great job there with like you know with like Serrano and what have you but um, yeah fight some fight some fighters and just and and whatever happens with Tony he don't, he don't want to fight Tony definitely trust me but yeah we'll see never say never uh, Dave <laughs> just want to just want to go back to the weekend um, Canelo did to be great we know he was at 175 before, but a lot of people say Kovalev was way past his best at the time. Um, did you expect that kind of performance from Bivol? If you want me to be honest, in in our gym, we all we all rate Bivol highly. Are we, uh, you know, everyone see Bivol and Bertabiev, but I've always kind of like favoured Bivol because because of his boxing ability and IQ and his legs. Um, with the Canelo fight, we all thought it was like. A very hard five. Game. Listen, great Canelo for taking that chance and taking, like you said, daring to be great. I don't see why people are so happy because oh, he, 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 he shouldn't even he shouldn't even have tried this. He shouldn't have tried that. Listen, if he wins it, it's like wow. Do you know what I mean? And he's gone through weights, and other fighters have gone through weights. So he so he runs into a man that beats him. Well, let's not get right. He wasn't no average Joe. He's one of the, arguably the best but 100% one of the top two light heavyweights in the division. So he's not gone in and like fought somebody that's like cherry-picked. Some people were saying he's ducking others to fight Bivol. Like, what? So we kind of thought that, on his opinion, we thought he'd win, we thought he'd beat Canelo, but not get it on points. And they fucking tried. They tried. I mean, that, that last round. That's got, that, how is that fight going to that last round? That's bullshit. Again, it's bullshit. You know, I personally, I thought it was 9-3. Um, that's how I saw it. And I thought, I thought Canelo gave it his all, showed plenty of heart, took some big shots as the fight went on when he's tired as well. Man's tough. He's, he's, he's a legend of the sport. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't diminish him. Oh, he's, he's now crap. Dropping out of pounds, pound, dropping right down. No, because look at his body of work. Look at what he's done. You can't knock that. It just a guy at that weight it was just too and do you know what everyone's talking about it's just a weight just a weight no it's not Bivol can do super middleweight he's talking about doing super middleweight in, in, in the rematch the man's not a, a, a huge light heavyweight Bivol's boxing IQ boxing ability outboxed Canelo Alvarez Canelo's gone as if you look at his last few fights he's gone more and more one dimensional looking for that big power shot that blow your head off one shot break your break your face, break your ribs, whatever, break your arm. Whereas the other man in front of you is peppering you. Pop, 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 boxing IQ. Taking you to school. And each round that goes past that you haven't landed that bomb, you're also getting more and more tired. Your chances of landing it are, are, are diminishing. And, and that's what's happened. If you remember when he fought Kovalev, Kovalev's jab was out boxing him. And it's just that his plan ended up working because he caught up with him down the stretch. But again, we all knew that Bivol's fresh. He's not at the back end of his career. Um, Kovalev wins a great win, not knocking that, but it wasn't against the peak Kovalev. And I think he got a peak Bivol. And um, yeah, it, but it doesn't diminish Canelo as a fighter. But also, it, it's nice for Bivol. Lo I've loved Bivol's attitude since when they're talking about, oh, should you be pound for pound number one? And he's like, I don't think the resume is good enough to buy. Very honest and very, very true. But it's nice to see that. I don't believe, pound for pound, it's all about opinions and mythical. I'm not a big, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not something that should be taken seriously and should be fought over, like, as in what people do on social media. But I don't believe it's one of those things where just, if you're, if you're like, relatively not got much of a resume and then you step up and you fight the pound for pound number one and you beat him, that don't mean that you're, all of a sudden, that one win means you, you outdo people like Usyk who's done what he's done Crawford who's done what he's done yeah? it doesn't mean that and so that's why I rate Bivol for what he said there and, and also how he's been about the win you know it's, it's, it's been refreshing and it's been great you mentioned that about potentially this fight taking place at 168 and, and Bivol now daring to be great because he's got an opportunity to become an undisputed champion but is the fight different at 168 or do you feel like the same result if Bi Bivol, I remember Bivol were talking about doing 168 for Canelo uh, I think it was pandemic around pandemic time and I was like, oh, okay, and you can see on Bivol, maybe you can, but you don't know, it could be the last two or three pounds where it fucks you. 
if he's strong at that way and if he if he's able to, to box how he wants to box in that at that way I make Bivol the favourite in a, in, a, in, a, in a rematch but Canelo if you look at Canelo in in the first Golovkin fight to the second Golovkin fight you look at the changes he made you look at look at his trunk movement his, his defence as he's, he's, he's gone on he's, he's improved so much but then I feel as though he's took that away again his last few fights so Canelo's shown that he can adapt he can add things to his game so I expect a better version of Canelo so the rematch is a fight that I would love to see I don't think it's a great fight for Canelo to take straight away I think he should take the Golovkin fight straight away and then go back and revisit Bivol um, and also then Bivol's a little bit older where if he's coming down to super middleweight it might, might be a little bit more work um, but it'd be a good fight it'd be great for, listen either of fights great fights Dave, um, a fight that I've been asking you about for years, the five, six years, I'm, seven years I've known you about, is it going to happen? And you've always said to me, when it happens, we'll talk about it. And that was Khan and Brooke. And it happened way past his sell-by date. Both fighters this week, firstly, Kel Brook announced his retirement. He had options on the table. And Amir Khan, everyone was calling for him to retire, but obviously we know what Amir Khan's like. He and I wake up to the news that he has finally retired as well. Both fighters, great fighters for British boxing. I just want to get your thoughts. Do you know what? Um, when, when the fight got made, and I remember I, I'm, I was privileged to commentate on that fight, and I wanted going into the fight, and then especially after the fight, I wanted both men to have that as the last fight, go out, that's it, done. And at the end of the fight, that's what I wanted. And I was so happy to see Kel make that decision that he's retired and then we're just here today and we hear the news that Amir Khan's retired fantastic great they've both done amazing in their careers Amir Khan is has got to be one of the most underappreciated fighters that we've had in this country um, look at the fights he's had look at the, the, the ball it's a lot of his downfalls have, be, have been because he's shown too much balls where when he's when when he's clearly showed he's got the ability to outbox somebody, he's gone in there to, to, to make it a little bit exciting and, and let his hands go a little bit more and, and try and bang him out and he ends up getting getting chinned. Um, but that's part of his allure and that's part of his legacy where he is exciting. Maidana fight, unbelievable. Katelnik performance, unbelievable. There's a lot of performances in there. The the sheer bollocks of going up and fighting Canelo, you know? People like to make fun of the fact that he, when, when he got it. Listen, it's one of the great knockouts of this sport. But it also shows you the size difference between the two men. Um, but he dared. He dared. And people some say, oh, yeah, but you would. If, 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 listen, a lot of people turn around and say, oh, I'll do that for that money. I'll do that for that. But to actually go out in there and do it. Put your, put your name, your brand and your, you know, your stature in that position where you could get embarrassed. He did it over and over again. So he's been a great fighter, and you have to look at his achievements and look at him in the amateurs, look at him in the pros. He's, he's, he's been brilliant, and I'm so glad that he's gone out. He's gone out on that fight. Um, and same for Kel, world champion. And I'm 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 so happy that, that he beat Khan because that keeps him at peace. Kel's somebody that's 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 always had ups and downs and things like that, and you know that he was chasing Khan and, he, and, and if he hadn't have beaten Khan that was something that I would always worry about going forward now I kind of like as somebody that I was there day one in the Ingle gym with Kel he won a British title with me a, a tiny part of his career I, I had involvement with and then a commentator on his last fight and so to close that chapter like that I kind of look at Kel now and I know he can be at peace with his career and he can move on to do whatever he wants to do and enjoy his life without having anything eaten away at him in a boxing sense and thinking I should have I could have I wish he's, he's done it he's been a world champion he's got to win over Amir Khan retire so for both Khan and Brooke to retire in the space for a few days like that it's nice it's nice into that that rivalry as well Dave with them retiring over the years we've had David Hago Tony Bellugo uh, James DeGale uh, George Groves, a lot of fighters have, have kind of disappeared and these fighters kind of had standalone, were standalone main events without doubt all of these fighters towards, especially towards the end of their career. Who now, outside of the heavyweights, who now do you think can kind of take British boxing and become that icon, that global icon and not just become a global icon but put bums on seats which is the most important thing? 
even so, if there's a few names. <laughs> so, I'm because I'm a little bit older. So I remember when you Ben, your Eubanks, your Collins all retired, and then Joe was the one that came to because he beat he beat Eubank kind of like, and then when you saw that Eubank was was on his way out, um, then Joe kind of carried carried it forward. Joe and Naz, and so I've seen a few generations now. So. Now it's another another era of fighters leaving the sport, and now we look to the next lot. But there's a little period first where you need a bit of time because the, there isn't a perfect change in the guard, really, sometimes. Um, I know Eubank into Calzaghe kind of was, um, but right now you look at it and you, and you think they need a, a few more fights. They need a, maybe a bit, of, you know, a bit more promotion. Um, Obviously, they're building Matchroom and, and Dazone are building Conor Ben. Conor Ben, exciting. He's got the banter, got the got the personality, got got that confidence. He's got that um, that X factor, where if his if his in the ring achievements can match that, he would then be the face of the sport and and you know a, a massive massive name for for British boxing. Um, outside of that, it's it's kids that are coming through and we do, we're not there yet you know we're hoping I know Sky are hoping that people like Adam Azim and people like that you Ben Whitaker's that signed yes but these are massive question marks because they're right at the beginning of their career so you can't it's a little bit some characters I think Whitaker I think maybe Adam Azim are comfortable in having that weight dropped on and saying go on son we want you to be the next big star other fighters maybe not yet because it's like whoa that's a lot of pressure on them um, and you have to allow them time to develop um, but a promoter a promoter and a TV network can create a star can create a star out of somebody that's actually not amazing ability it has to be good it has to be solid it has, to, it has to be able to do the business when the bell goes against the right fight in the right fights but a, a promoter and a TV company creates the star with the backing with the lights with the interviews you know guys like you sticking a mic in front of them are like, they've got to have that personality to be able to work with because if you ain't got that personality to work with you stick a mic in front of someone and it's like oh they give me one word answers how can you create a star out of that and i think ultimately whether fans like or dislike you you have to connect with them on an emotional level and you have to a promoter has to look at identify the fighters in his stable and think right he's He's got his. He's got his person like right. Let's and he also can fight. Let's back him. You know, there are fighters that have slipped through. I think that have slipped through the net that you know you won't you won't agree. So people I won't agree with. But I've people wouldn't have a clue the McDonald twins how funny and how much personality and how much charisma those two had. On a, forget cameras on a day to day life basis. And if you had a camera on them and if you put them in front of in front of the cameras and, and sports more give them more exposure i know listen not i'm not talking on an ability level the same as, as what you're talking about but you would have created bigger stars out of that and there are fighters like that that are around today where people aren't aware of the personalities because the promoters don't choose to pick them to give you the opportunity to let your personality come out you know and so there are fighters out there that that won't become stars that could become stars and there are fighters out there that will become stars that you wouldn't expect to become stars on a boxing level but because they're picked out as it's got that little something we can work with and we want to work with and we want to turn into a star you get the right opponents get the right amount of media towards them and then next minute in a couple of years time you see them fucking hell I never expected that you know and that's how it works really so uh, looking at who's who's out there right now I'm not sure. There's, there's, there's a few, there's a few fights that need to be had still. Okay, well, Dave, thank you so much for your time. Always precious with your time with me. Um, yeah, all the best to the guys again on Saturday night, and uh, yeah, enjoy the last game of the season with Manchester United. <laughs> what the fuck? It's bad as Adam Smith. What, what's that about? You know, it's our time to rub it in. You know it's our time to rub it in. Our time. Can you just refresh? I support Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool. How's that league going? Huh? Huh? Oh, it's close. Huh? It's close. Oh, okay. Champions League's going well. Who's... Who, the Cup's going well. Who's, like, faltering? Who's faltering? I'm... Listen. 
City or Liverpool? Fucking hell. It's not a good choice for me. But I'd rather, I'd rather City win it than Liverpool win all four. I think you're going to win Champions League. Fair play. I think, I think you're going to smash Real Madrid because they give too many opportunities and Liverpool take opportunities. Whereas City had loads of opportunities and couldn't put ball in the back at net enough. Liverpool will put them away. So I think you're going to win Champions League. You'll probably win. you got FA Cup, haven't you? Who are you playing? Chelsea. Come on, the Chelsea. Watch that together if you want. <laughs> Fuck off. But, but I've got like 60 seconds before it runs out. If City lose on Sunday, they're playing West Ham away. If they lose 2 0, and Liverpool. Oh, look at you, hoping, praying on other people. One second. Oh. And if Liverpool beat Southampton 4 0, and on the final game of the season, if City beat Villa 2 1, and Liverpool beat Wolves 2 0, it goes it goes to a playoff game. Oh, does it? Yeah. Playoff game? Yeah. It's a shame it's happen. And guess where it can happen? <laughs> can you imagine? Listen, Man United kids, congratulations. One FA trophy. Future's bright. That's the way. That's the only thing you're going to celebrate. That's all it's about. It's the future. It's about the kids, kid, children of our future. Dave Caldwell, IFL TV. Thank you very much. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.